Zannies, ads, Tussin, footballs, bars, roofies, robo tripping, blueberries, roaches, peaches, farmies. And by the time you realize that you've started doing it pretty frequently, you're going to be physically addicted, and then you're at a point where you can't stop even if you want to. Every prescription drug has an effect on you. That's why doctors give them to people. Some people think that because drugs come from a doctor, they're safe. But taking them for recreational use to get high can be just as dangerous and addictive as taking street drugs. A pill can have a totally different reaction on you than the person it was prescribed for. So a drug that's okay for somebody else could be dangerous for you. Because of potential for abuse and addiction, the DEA puts many prescription drugs in the same category as opium and cocaine. They're made obviously by you know pharmaceutical companies. There's basically four different categories. Depressants, opiates, and morphine derivatives, stimulants, and antidepressants. They come in capsules, tablets, and liquids. A lot of people think that taking a prescription medication is okay because it's not illegal. Uh, but the truth is that taking a prescription drug or giving a prescription drug is a form of using drugs or drug dealing. The first time I ever took Xanax was with, with friends. They just had someone I was curious. I was curious and I had a friend that just told me about it and I wanted to try it and I tried it. It was in high school, I remember. One of my friends had uh, gotten a tooth pulled, I think it was, and got a prescription of them. He had an entire bottle and he was just telling me what it was and if I wanted to try it and uh, I just went for it. I was introduced to it by a friend of mine that actually was going to see a psychiatrist to get it. I was just hearing all of these good things, like, or these fun things. And it's like you're drunk and you don't have to drink. It's like, oh, they must be great. I'll try one. It's like, okay, well, here, take these. You'll have a great night. You'll, you know, you're going to feel really good. And, you know, it's, it's going to be totally fine. My best friend in high school, she gave me one because her boyfriend used to take them and she thought that they made her more comfortable around him and more secure about herself. And so she was like, hey, try one, you know. I'd try anything that anybody had, just test out different prescriptions, and it just kept moving up. I wasn't picky about what kind I took, whether it was Klonopin or Xanax or Valium. Uh, I mean, so many of my friends were getting it prescribed from psychiatrists, and they were going to two or three different ones a month, so we had a pretty steady flow of it. I started like going to doctors and you know telling them a lie about trying to get Xanaxes, you know, telling them that I couldn't concentrate at school or I was just nervous or not comfortable around anybody. Then I would start getting prescriptions. Being that they're prescriber, it was easy to justify to myself that I was probably the kind of guy who needed this kind of thing, and it was okay. At school, like I didn't really remember the day, or it made the day go by really quickly. So. I got them as often as I could, and I took them as often as I could. They tend to blur reality quite a bit, and, and the days sort of run into one another. Days turn into weeks, that turn into months, and you don't realize it just sort of slips away from you. Because I wasn't experiencing anything that I cared about in life. I didn't have any feelings. I didn't have any emotions. Kind of like lulled myself into a false sense of security, feeling like I was getting away with stuff, even though I'd still have to deal with it when I came down. You're constantly high, so you're not yourself, you're not the person that anyone in your life knew you as. You're some stranger to them, and you're mean. I would steal from my mom, I would steal from my brother, I would act out at family functions, I'd make a fool of myself, I would embarrass them, I would tell them things that I didn't mean, be very hateful. And it got to the point where my family kicked me out of the house and weren't willing to have me around when I was taking it because of how violent I would get. Within 24 hours, you're starting to come down and you crash off of it. Feeling like the worst case of the flu, can't move, can't think, just don't feel like yourself at all. Feel yourself starting to get depressed, being just less happy with everything around you. I was very depressed. My panic attacks and anxiety was at a high, very high point. I would be very emotional. I would start crying, angry. When you're in that position, when you're feeling really physically ill and you know that you can get rid of it, it can be gone in 20 minutes. It's just all too easy to reach over and grab some more. By the time somebody's been addicted for so long, they don't have enough strength left in them to actually try and do that, so it's just easier to stay hot. I would black out and you're like, okay, what happened for the last two days, you'd piece things together and you couldn't remember it one bit, like totally black. When I would black out, I was completely awake 
but I have no recollection of what happened. On my way home from the party, I got into um, three different car accidents because I was blacked out and I had no idea what I was doing. Got to my mom's house and the cops were coming. I knew they were coming. My only solution was I was, my, my plan was to blow up my car, my car in my mom's driveway. So I went out and I set my car on fire. I passed out at a party. I woke up. The next thing I knew, I was at a hospital, and my friend that I was at the party with told me what happened and said that I took about 20 Xanax that night. They called an ambulance, took me to the emergency room, and they had to pump my stomach. They thought I was trying to kill myself, but I was just trying to get high. I was drinking with the, with the guy, and he kept on like encouraging me to drink more, and I didn't understand. I, I just didn't really question it. I think I was 16. And then about a few hours later, I woke up in his bed, and we were having sex, and I started crying, and I pushed him off of me. I don't know how he thought that was okay. I don't know how I didn't say no. I don't remember, so I assume that I did, but maybe I didn't. Like, like you just don't know. When you use Rohypnol and you're forgetting everything, you just, you have, you have no idea what you really did. A guy that I used to know, um, is on death row now in Arizona because he was on Ruhifnol. He took a lot of them and ended up um, killing somebody. A buddy of mine continued to go in and out of the bathroom using Ritalin and he managed to put himself in a state of unconsciousness and jump off a six-story balcony and when he hit the ground he was he was immediately dead. I nodded out in a bedroom and woke up to find my friend. He was laid out on the floor. He had overdosed and passed away. He'd been laying there for two days. And uh, my friend, this other girl, she was sitting in a chair right where I'd left her, slumped over blue. I actually had to crawl over two dead friends to get out of the door. So even when you come off of it, you're still cloudy in a way. You can't comprehend short-term memory loss. Things don't seem to be as clear in my mind. Things don't seem to connect as quickly in my mind. I don't remember any of the times that I was blacked out. Everything that I know from when I was blacked out comes from third party. So there's definitely chunks of my life that um, I'm missing. And I don't know that I'll ever get them back. There's weeks of time that I have no idea, you know, what was going on. The people who want you to buy these drugs don't, they don't care. They really don't care about what happens to you. They want the money and that's really what it comes down to. Otherwise they just wouldn't do it. They wouldn't make it sound so good. They wouldn't make it sound so interesting. They wouldn't make it sound like this thing that it's gonna be this one time fun thing. If I knew what the, the side effects and the consequences and if I knew that I was gonna be the way I was, I mean, there would be no way that I would have ever taken Xanax because still to this day, I have a lot of regrets. The biggest danger of it is seriously the word of mouth. People talk about it and always talk good about it because they think it's okay, it's not gonna hurt you. But it's just as hard on you as a cocaine would be. Eventually it gets to where it grabs hold of you and sucks you in. Just because it's readily available or just because you can get it from your doctor or just because your mom has it in the medicine cabinet or whatever doesn't make it okay and it doesn't mean that it's safe. I remember when I was little you got TV saying just say no. I'm like okay just say no whatever but uh, nobody ever says this is gonna kill you. This is gonna take your life away. This is gonna make your family hate you. It's gonna make your girlfriend hate you. It's gonna make uh, life a living hell. Uh, I probably would have listened to him. <laughs>